Hey everyone, welcome to Watch Complications. I'm Brian. This is actually my first video since passing 20,000 subscribers. I am so appreciative of all the people who follow me and subscribe to the channel, who support me in my work. Also at watchcomplications.com, whether it's people that are here for the watch making stuff, complications, watch modding, people that buy my custom holders for you know modding their own and making their own watch combinations with different cases and movements doing a ton of 3D printing these days. I got a new 3D printer, look at it. I'm gonna do a video on that soon as well. It's the Bamboo Labs X1 Carbon, I'm loving it. So thank you, uh, and hopefully uh, you found the content helpful over the years. I hope to continue keeping the channel going and providing all kinds of watch content, be it reviews, uh, stuff about accessories, tools, and of course, we just run the gamut here at Watch Complications. But thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, what we're gonna do in this video is way back in like 2019, 2020, I came across an app called Watchy. This is an app on the iOS store for helping manage your watch collection. And I contacted a developer who lives in Finland and we struck up a, re a relationship, a kind of long distance relationship, and we've really gotten to know each other well over the years. And I you know, communicate daily almost with him. We have just become friends. And I also help run all the websites and information and do testing and things around features with Watchy and Watchy Pro. And it's just been a long time. I only have that first initial review I did back in like 2020. And so much has changed in the app. You can see on the screen behind me, there is a Watchy Pro user guide. I'll have a link to that in the description below, which details all the features, how to use them. But I wanna go over those in a visual way in uh, this video and highlight the recent uh, releases and features that are in the application, where they are, how to use them, uh, and so that you know that they exist and they're there. Because it's a very comprehensive app. There's a, lots of different things you can keep track of. Just wanna highlight some of the more recent and cool stuff that's been uh, put into the app as of late. I've been so busy over the past week or two, really. Um, I, I forgot to put on a watch today. I barely remember to turn on the lights for the video, uh, but I've been wearing only five watches, four or five watches this year, um, as you're gonna see in the video clips of the features in Watchy Pro. But I'm going to, in the next month, to have quite a few subsequent releases on watches and my summaries of those, because I've been wearing them for months and it's time to really get into the details of how I feel about uh, a subset of watches that I've been wearing. Can't wait to do those. Hint, hint, there are some CWs and there's a Rolex. I'll link that video somewhere in here about the Daytona. Although I don't have a watch on, I have a pineapple on my shirt. It's a shirt from a company in Maui, Hawaii. It's the only working pineapple plantation slash farm left on the island uh, that does it in a sustainable way, not the way that the Dole Company did, you know, back in the 1900s and just monocropped the islands to like ruin. Uh, so don't buy Dole products, buy something that's like local and really sustainable. So if you want really good pineapple, Maui pineapple, that's the only place to get it. Uh, they do subscription, they'll ship it to you. It gets, they ship it, it's in your house in two days. No, they're not a sponsor on this video or anything like that but I just like sharing some of the fun little quirks. That, I like pineapple and I like buying it from sustainable companies that didn't like ruin entire ecosystems in the history. All right, so let's just get right to it and we'll talk about some of the features in Watchy Pro. All right, so let's go into Watchy Pro. And for those who regularly watch the channel, might know what some of the watches are in my comprehensive collection. Some of you might get some insight into some of the other uh, watches that I have. So, you know, keep your eyes open if you want to know some of the other things in my collection that I haven't talked about yet. My most recent acquisition is the Rolex uh, Daytona, and I will have a video on that soon with a review now that I've worn it for going on two months. So I give a really personal description of my experience with the watch so far. In order to see a lot of the new features, of course, you can always refer back to the user guide, which I mentioned in the intro, is in the settings tab. Now, I'm going to go through a lot of these settings in here that are new for example changing the overall background color for the main watch view but to turn on the features i want to start with you need to go into the settings and tools and go down to show miscellaneous tools we'll turn that on and then go back to watches and you'll see a few little icons show up there's the watchy logo in the lower left of each watch picture there's a folder and there's the paper clip I want to start with the folder. So I want to click on the folder. This is under the 
the Daytona. And what you see when you click a folder is your collection wear history. You can see the text at the top. It says collection wear history. And this will show you the recent wear history for your collection. And this includes all the watches initially when you look at this. So you can see, you know, the past several days I've worn the Daytona. Before that I had the Christopher War Belcanto. Then I had a Lumiere. And you can see what days of the week and the wear counts associated with each time I've worn those watches. You can also see the blue and the red for Saturday and Sunday. That's of course derived from a lot of like Casio sort of watches that will have the Saturday date in blue or the Sunday date in red. Nice little touch there. So you notice in sort of the top right, there are a couple of list uh, menus there. Where you can choose, do I wanna view the collection uh, as a whole? Do I wanna choose a specific watch? Say so I just wanna look at the watch. So now I've just got the Daytona in there. You can also choose any certain days of the week. Well, how many Mondays have I worn it? It'll show me the Mondays that I've worn it. So there's two different options here. I wanna say all days of the week or I can choose the watch collection versus the watch specifically that I'm looking at at the moment. So let's go to the Belcanto. Again, I can see it within the context of the collection, but I can also just say, no, I just wanna look at the Belcanto and when I've worn it, or if I wanted to get even more granular and say what days of the week do I typically wear the watch. So collection wear history, that's a new feature in the latest version of Watchy Pro. The paper clip you can see in the plates is a parts and accessory list, you know, different straps, bracelets, things that you might have for a, a particular watch. I'm gonna use the Christopher Ward Lumiere, one of my most worn watches since I bought it in September of 24. I love it, it's just such a great daily watch, titanium. You see in the picture, I've got it on the orange rubber strap, but I also have the titanium bracelet. So I can go into the paper clip and then it gets me to the parts and accessories. And then I can say what type of part or accessory I want to add. So I'm gonna go down here and I'm going to choose, you know, I've got a bracelet for it. If there was some sort of name you wanted to give it, I'm just gonna leave it as bracelet there. Material, uh, titanium and weight. I don't have it right now, but let's just put in like something. Okay, this weighs 40 grams. I don't think it weighs that much. I can't remember, but I can put it in the parts and accessories list. So I can go in there and look, okay, I've got a bracelet for it. And so for the accessories, you can set some sort of a status for it. I say, well, it's it's in the drawer because it's not on the watch right now. And I can give it a name, it's got its weight, where did I get it, purchase price. So you can keep track of accessory information for each of your parts and accessories for individual watches. I think the most prominent way that feature will be utilized is people listing the bracelets or straps they have in their boxes that go best with a particular watch, particularly if they're switching them between multiple watches. But it can serve as a reminder of what you do have somewhere in a box if you wanted to switch it onto the watch. Another recent feature in the application is that there's information now behind the little badges that you see on the plates. And by badges, I mean all those little circles at the top of the plates and the one that's in the lower left of each picture. So for example, let's looking at the Rolex Daytona here at the top. If I click on the little Swiss circle in the top left, I'm gonna get a summary of my watches that are made in Switzerland. What years they're from, you see I got quite a range there. That's because I actually have a pocket watch in my collection that was made in 1900 or so, uh, up to now, 2025, which is this Daytona. You can see there are seven watches in my collection, and you can see categories of them, total wear, total cost, etc. for those watches. Let's say I click on the Belcanto here, which is the blue plate. I click on the little England flag. You can see my watch is made in the United Kingdom. One of the summary points you can see at the bottom is how many different countries are represented in your collection, which is a nice little feature. So good little information there. Now, if you click on the category of the watch, and again, you go into a plate like this, you can set, notice the, where the watch is from or made, where the movement is from or made, and then you see the gold and black plate in the middle, which lets you set the type, right? So this is a dress style watch, which is what I had. So I go back out to the main plate and I, you can see that symbol right next to the flag symbol. You're gonna get some summary information about the dress watches, Christopher Ward watches, that's what this type is, and some other detailed uh, spec information. The third little badge is the movement type. So you can quickly see movement information without going in right to the, to the watch. So I could go into the watch and go look at the you know, movement information and the dimensions and complications and this stuff. But this is just sort of quick access. So I can click on the little gear that gives me the movement info. That's nice. 
dimension info, which is the arrow. Again, quick view. You see for the Rolex, I only got 25% of the dimensions in. So I need to put in the lug width, lug to lug, thickness. I haven't put those in yet. I just put it in quickly, like a couple weeks ago. 80%, that's the data entry. That's just telling us that this is the basic watch details and how far along you are in that process. You can see, for example, Belcanto, it's a full bar. So I've got all the data entry for the Belcanto. And then you have the star, which tells you uh, how many times you've worn it and earned badges for how many wears. You can see my current wear count on the Belcanto is 60. I need 40 more wears to get to 100 to get to the next level. Uh, the Daytona is currently a little bronze star and I've got 23 wears and I need seven to get to 30. So as you earn those little stars as you go along, how many times you've worn it. Of course, you can see other features on here that have been around for a little while, like the effective wear rate here in the window. You can also get to some of the details like how many joules, you know, the beat rate, what version of Watchy Pro we're on, wear count, current I mean, status of the watch. Of course, that's a keeper, right? <laughs> it's not a limited edition. So on and so forth, other measurements. So looking at this Casio MRW200H, again, sort of like a, a watch I grab fairly often. You can just customize these plates to each kind of match the dial and the case and the markers and stuff. It just makes it feel like the watch itself. So the info frame you can see is a dark blue. I've set the crown as a dark blue. I've got the, the, the Japanese symbols there in the upright. This is a Japanese plate instead of the gears that you see on some of these. It's just highly customizable to make each plate feel like the watch and just match it and provide the contrast that you want between you know, the text on the dials and for those visually inclined, it's a lot of fun. But let me go down to the Casio here. So say we go into a watch, you can see at the top, look at the very top, you can see, you know, go back to our watch list, you see that Casio mentioned there at the top, you see that little number 10. I click on that and this gives Another new feature, which is the wear count leaderboard. You can kind of see how many watches you've worn in this given year and then some historical data about what you've worn in previous years and months as far back as you want to go, depending on how long you've been keeping track of these stats. Now, sometimes I'm pretty bad about entering my information about my wares. Let me go back to the Daytona just to give you an example. I'm going to click on the wear history and you can see, for example, let's scroll down here. You can see there are two wares on Tuesday. That's because I wore it on Monday and I didn't mark it on Monday, forgot to, so then I click the wear today twice on Tuesday. Oh, you can delete these too if you, you know, made a mistake or something. Good to mention. So let's go back in here and click on this 10 at the top. And this would be the same no matter which watch you were in to see the leaderboard for 2025. You can see my Lumiere is currently dominating. I haven't worn it the past week, but I've worn it 11 times in the past 30 days and 12 times in 2025. Now this data is skewed. I've worn it consistently throughout. I just had them for like three months and hadn't kept track of the wear rate for this new feature. So I had to go in and just say, yeah, I've worn this like 60 times in the past four months. So my data is a little bit wonky, but you get the idea hopefully with what you can keep track of. You can see how many times in the last week, month and year have I worn each of these watches. And you can see in 2025, even though the counts are a little bit wonky, I've really only worn five watches. And that's the Lumiere, the Daytona, Belcanto, MRW200H, and the uh, C60 Trident GMT 300, which is one of the other newer watches I bought from CW, which is this one. Love it. Again, I'll, let me go into the Belcanto here. You can see the same leaderboard. Now, if you click the frame at the top where it says wear count leaderboard 2025, you can cycle through other sort of things. Well, what was it in 2024? Of course, I didn't have this new version. Um, updated in 2024 so it doesn't have that historical data but as you wear things and go through a year uh, these stats will fill in and then you can go by uh, week and months in the year so lots of different ways to see wear rate information and historical data related to your watch wears you know I'll point out that you need to let the data accumulate so the current versus previous months has data a lot of these new features are detailed in the app history on the app store so you can also look there if you want to know when these features were added. So what I want to finish with is going through some of the new features uh, in settings. One of them I mentioned was changing the overall color. So right now I have dark gray so you can see the background is dark gray. If I go to my watch list look behind the plates you can see it's a dark gray color. That can be changed now and there's a variety of colors you can set. So let's say I wanted to do something like uh, indigo. Sure why not. There you go you can change it to indigo. And what's electromagnetic look like? I don't look at that. That looks kind of nice. 
So I can go back here, right? So it changes the background. You can see it offset looks a little bit different with that particular background, makes the plates a little bit more prominent. Here black looks like, and you can see it changes it in all the screens, petrol blue. Hmm. Interesting. But you can set something that makes sense for you. So that's a couple of the colors. I'm gonna go set back to electromagnetic. That looks kind of fun. So some of the things that have been around for a while, you can hide and show the wear rate, uh, sold watches. There's another feature called rounded watch images. So let's see what that looks like. Turn that on, go over to watches. You can see it'll make the watches in a circular frame as opposed to a square frame. Uh, the scrolling is a little bit more jittery when that is set. Uh, that might get fixed at some point, but I like the square ones personally better myself. And here's another new feature. You can fade unworn watches. So what's interesting about this is if you're not wearing watches, they'll slowly fade into hidden over time. This fade is setting. If I go to this and go back to watches, depending on how often I'm wearing it or not, you can see the watches start to fade. It's like, Brian, you haven't worn me in a while. Please wear me. So that's another newer feature. Of course, the badges, you could take those on or off depending on how busy you want a plate to look. Um, I like seeing the badges myself. Miscellaneous tools we talked about, show on and off. And you can also highlight special watches, which are the most and least worn watches. Kind of gives them a rating and a ranking towards the top. So you can kind of see what's going on with that. And then, you know, same features we've always had. Remember, if you have a lot of watches, a lot of images, always turn on compression. That'll help things work faster. Of course, you can export and import from uh, Excel files and keep track of your history log. So those are some of the new features in Watchy Pro. This is version, again, you can look at it right here if you wanna know what version it says, 3.4.2. If you look at the info frame on the white Daytona plate, and of course it's got all these other features, right? Turning the gears, you can see information this way as well, depending on what all you've got entered in the app. So yeah, let's check out. Well, that's a quick overview. If you haven't used the app before, maybe take a look at it. If you have iOS, unfortunately, no, there's no Android version for it right now. It's been something contemplated in the past, but just takes, takes a lot of work. So don't know if that'll ever happen, but if you're on iOS or, you know, a Mac OS, you can get the app and have your watch collection all sorted out for you with all those wonderful details. There are just a lot of features. Can't cover it all, just but you can keep track about anything you can imagine. For example, I didn't go over features that have been around for a while like time grapher and accuracy info for your watches, but it's got everything in there. Hopefully you got something out of it. Again, continue to stick around. Watch for my 20K video, which will have some giveaway stuff probably and got some reviews coming up. And I'll probably also do another summary video of recent uh, movement holder projects I've done to fit movements to cases. I've got like three or four more. It seems like I'm constantly adding on new combinations as people keep contacting me to do those projects. But I have updated my form on the website to include new combinations that I've done. And there's another set coming in the next few months. Anyway, thanks for being around. Hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and check out my website. But for now, I'm out.